This conference will now be recorded. Okay. Um, so today we are going to talk about plagiarism and citing your sources. Um, academic honesty is a phrase you will hear a lot uh, in college, especially. Um, and it basically just means that you are doing your own work uh, and you're not presenting someone else's work as your own. And we're also going to talk about writing styles and citing sources today. Um, so plagiarism, what is it? Plagiarism is the act of copying work that someone else made and presenting it as your own. And this can be as blatant as having someone else write your paper. Um, but it is also really easy to accidentally plagiarize. Uh, this can happen when we don't properly cite our sources, or sometimes we think an idea is our own, but it was actually someone else's idea. So if you're doing research and you're reading a ton of resources and you have all of these ideas floating around in your head, but you're not uh, keeping track of your sources and your notes, then it's easy to think an idea might have been your own when it actually belonged to another researcher it was in, a, in the source that you read. So definitely want to be careful when you're writing a research paper that you're keeping up with your sources and you're keeping other people's ideas distinct from your own ideas on a topic. Uh, another type of plagiarism is copying another source's sentence or paragraph, and then just changing a few words. Um, so changing a few words is not enough to make it distinctly different from the original source. So uh, an instructor will um, consider that plagiarism. Another type of plagiarism is copying so many words or so many ideas from just one source that it makes up a majority of your work, whether you give credit or not. Um, so you could cite all of your sources meticulously, uh, but if you're taking too many ideas from one source or two sources, then that can also be considered plagiarism. Um, in other words, if you're only using one or two sources and not using enough of your own original ideas, even if you're citing your sources, it's plagiarism. So you want to make sure that you're get, not getting all of your information from just a few sources. And you want to find diverse sources that help you prove your own idea about a topic. Remember, we talked about in the that in the first class a lot. Um, we want to have our own idea. And that's where this comes into play with plagiarism. Uh, students can also self-plagiarize. This happens when a student writes a paper for one class, and then they might turn that paper in, that same paper in, for a different assignment in a different class. So um, an instructor will consider that to be plagiarism. Um, another example is if a student turns in a new paper, but it has a lot of the same content, as a paper that they've already received a grade on, uh, that is also considered plagiarism. And plagiarism happens all of the time in, you know, outside of the academic world, right? So can, can you all think of any examples of uh, when plagiarism, like have you seen plagiarism happening outside of school or outside of the academic world? You can just type your examples in the chat box. I have an example. Um, it, when I'm on Instagram, um, social media is kind of a breeding ground for plagiarism, or it can be. Um, when I'm on Instagram and somebody shares Yes, exactly, Braylon. Taking someone's idea. Mm -hmm. um, so like if somebody shares a picture on Instagram, but they didn't take the picture and they don't say who originally took the picture, 
that is plagiarism. If they're presenting that work as their own, that's plagiarism. So um, I see that a lot. If you share a comic um, and you don't say who originally made the comic, that's plagiarism. Okay, do you, do you all have any questions about this first section? All right, we're gonna move on. Okay, so there are some rules for when you need to cite your source in a research paper. Uh, so rule number one, when you refer to another person's idea, opinion, or theory in your research paper, you wanna be sure to cite it. There is a caveat to this, if information is considered common knowledge meaning it's so widely known that there isn't really a source that the, the information originated from. Um, or it's just, like for instance, George Washington was the first president of the United States. Uh, if you have gone to school in the United States, you know that George Washington was the first president of the United States. So if you say that in a research paper, you don't have to cite an original source because it's common knowledge. Another example is that birds lay eggs. Um, you don't have to figure out who the first person was that discovered that birds lay eggs and you know cite that in your paper. That is common knowledge. Another example is another example of a caveat to this is if information is foundational to a field. Uh, for example, Newton's law of gravity. Um, if, if a physicist is writing a paper and they talk about Newton's law of gravity, they don't have to cite where that was originally published. Um, or like a mathematical equation. If a mathematician is um, writing a paper, they don't have to cite equations. Okay. Um, so another rule of when to cite your source is if you use images in your work, uh, you need to cite them. This includes charts that you didn't create yourself, um, also photographs or illustrations. Um, so even if it's not under copyright, the image originated from somewhere. So be sure to cite where you found it. Um, and when I am working on putting together a presentation or um, a writing and I want to use somebody else's image, I always try to find the original owner. Um, when you're looking at sources, reading articles, you know, during the research process, um, a lot of times you'll see, like, for instance, when I'm researching history, I'll see a great historical photograph. And I'll want to use that photograph, but if my original source didn't cite it well, then I have to do some legwork to find out what the original owning institution was. So I can properly cite the owner of that historical photograph. And I usually look for open source images. Um, so, so images that are not under copyright protection and copyright is different from plagiarism. So I'm not going to go into it too much. That's more of a legal thing. Um, but I do try to find open source photographs. Uh, so the Library of Congress or Wikipedia are good sources for finding images that are not copyrighted. Okay, so another rule for when to cite is if you are quoting another person's written or spoken words, then you need a citation. If you paraphrase another person's written or spoken words, then you need a citation. Any questions before we move on? Okay. All right, so there are three simple ways to avoid plagiarism. And this uh, image is from Purdue University's online writing lab. 
which is such a wonderful resource when you're writing research papers. So I will uh, be talking about Purdue University uh, a little bit more later on, their writing lab a little bit more later on, uh, but they did create this infographic. Um, and I think it distills the information in a really good way. So number one, um, when you summarize, you are distilling someone else's work to its most basic points. So your summary is gonna be a lot shorter than what the original researcher wrote. Um, and then you also wanna be sure to reference the source. So when you're writing your paper, you wanna say, and you've, you know, you've summarized it, you're writing your paper, you wanna say, in Joan Smith's research on lizards who live in libraries, et cetera, and then your summary. Um, you wanna make sure you mention them in the summary. When you quote, unlike when you summarize, so moving on to the second way to avoid plagiarism, when you quote, unlike when you summarize, the text should be the exact length of the person's work that you are quoting. So you wanna make sure that you quote the exact words. You also have to cite your source when you quote, and you want to make sure to put quotations around your quote. Um, otherwise, people will not know it's a quote and they'll think you are taking the original author's idea and presenting it as your own. Um, you also want to make sure to make a note of the page number of where you found the quote, because you will need that for your in-text citation. Okay, and then point number three, uh, when you paraphrase, the text can be longer or shorter. Um, so you're kind of synthesizing the information and making your own um, conclusions from it. So paraphrasing is gonna be a little different than summarizing. Um, but you must still cite your source and you have to use your own words. So if you follow these three rules when you're researching, uh, you're gonna be in good shape and you're not gonna have to worry about plagiarism. Okay. All right, so we're gonna do a quiz. Okay, so the question is, to paraphrase properly, you need to, A, change a few words in the text and cite it to make it your own. Uh, when you're paraphrasing, maybe you put quotation marks around the text and cite it. Uh, when you paraphrase, you use only the idea from the text without citing it or D, summarize the text in your own words and cite it. What do you guys think the answer is? A, B, C, or D? D, okay. That is correct. D, when you summarize the text in your own words and cite it, that is paraphrasing. Good job. All right, question number two. Which of the following requires a citation? A, if you use an idea from another paper that you wrote. B, if you paraphrase another person's work. C, if you quote another person. Or D, all of the above. Yep, you're exactly right. D, good job. All right, and then this is the last question. Which of the following requires a citation? A, when I include my own ideas that are unique to the paper I am writing. B, when I refer to my own papers that I have previously written. Or C, none of the above. What do you guys think? You think C, none of the above? All right, let's look and see. Okay, yeah, so it's B, when, when you refer to your own paper that you have previously written, 
that will require a citation. However, if it's your own original idea, then it, for this paper, then that does not require a citation. All right, good job. Excellent work, you guys. Do you have any questions before I move on to citations? Do you, do you all have any questions about plagiarism? Okay, <clears throat> well, if you do just type them in the box and I'll get to them when I have a stopping point. Okay, so we're going to talk about why we cite our sources. Well, we always want to give credit to the original author. If you did some really great research and you wrote a really good paper and someone stole your idea and didn't credit you, you'd be pretty upset, right? I would be very upset. <laughs> I've seen it happen. Um, so, you know, it's just, it's just kind to, to cite the original author. Uh, number two, it lets your audience know that you have done proper research. For instance, if I am looking for a source to use in my research paper, I am not going to want to use sources that don't have citations. I want to look for uh, people who have done their research and who have documented their sources. It's a way of finding high quality research. Um, so you want to let people know you've done a great job researching and here are all my sources. And number three, uh, it allows researchers reading your paper to learn more on a topic by going back to the original source. So again, when I'm researching and I find a really good source that informs my topic, I'm going to go to their bibliography and I'm going to look at all the sources they used to find more sources for my research paper because chances are those sources are going to be really helpful to my work. So it helps other researchers do their research and find great sources. And then, of course, number four, it's going to help us avoid plagiarism. All right, so what elements usually make up a citation? Um, the author name, you always wanna make a note of the author name, the date of publication, uh, and you can find the date of publication on the title page in a book, uh, usually also in a journal. Um, you wanna make sure to write down the title of a work um a book title or an article title or even a chapter title if you're looking at a specific chapter in a book you want to make sure to make a note of all of that information uh the title of a journal if applicable if it's a if it is a scholarly article it came from a journal so you want to make sure you have that information um you want to note the volume and issue number so again if it if it came from a scholarly journal you're going to want it's going to probably have a volume and an issue number so you're going to want to make a note of that uh, and then you want to make sure that you write down the page range you're looking at the page range of the article or just the ideas that you're taking notes on and then number seven uh, you want to write down the publisher information uh, if applicable and it will also be found on the title page of a book so when you're doing research and you're reading through your sources and you're taking notes, this is the information that you need to be making a note of. So when it comes time to write your paper and cite your sources, you don't have to go hunting for the information. You're already going to have it all right there. And I speak from experience. I um, have definitely had to hunt down a source last minute while I am putting together my paper. Um, so don't be like Ms. Shalise and <laughs> just take really good notes. It will save you a lot of headache in the future. Any questions about that? Okay. All right, so we're gonna take a minute to talk about writing styles. Um, 
<laughs> Excellent point, Braylon. Excellent point. <laughs> um, okay, so writing styles. Um, three of the most common are APA, MLA, and Chicago. APA stands for American Psychological Association. And it's most frequently used in social science fields. Uh, so an example is anthropology, archaeology, economics, geography, sometimes history, um, law, politics, and then psychology and sociology. Um, I used APA for my master's degree in library and information studies. Um, so it's actually the style that I use the most and am most familiar with. Uh, the next one is MLA, which stands for Modern a Language Association. And MLA is used most frequently in humanities fields, such as religion, philosophy, English. If you have to take a college English class, you're probably going to use MLA um, and literature. Um, so this is definitely the style that is most commonly used. Um, have have any of you have any of you used MLA before? Have you have you tried to use MLA in the past? No. Okay, well, you probably will. <laughs> um, and then the last style is Chicago, which is the Chicago Manual of Style. Uh, and it is most frequently used in history fields. And it uses footnotes, whereas the, um, so if you're reading a work and you see there are little numbers next to parts of the writing, um, then that is indicating that there's a footnote, and that's probably Chicago style. Um, now, you can, MLA also has the option for footnotes, but typically if people are writing with footnotes, they're using Chicago. Okay, so the elements of using a writing style. So a writing style does more than just give you a format for citations. It also tells you how to format your paper. So if your paper has a title page, how is that gonna be formatted? Where do you put your name? Where do you put your class? Do you put your teacher's name? Um, the style is gonna tell you all of that. Uh, does it have page numbers? What information is gonna be included in the header? Or is it gonna be a footer um, of the paper? What size of margin you use? what type of size and what type of font and what size of font you can use. Even right down to um, what kind of paper you can use, like what size of paper you can use. Uh, so there's a lot that goes into using a writing style. Your writing style also, uh, of course, is gonna provide a format for your citations. And you're, it's gonna tell you basically three types of citations. So there's your, your list of all of your sources at the end of your paper, uh, usually called like a bibliography or a source list. Um, and then there are in-text citations. So that's where you put information at the end of a sentence in, in your actual paper that leads the reader to your source page your source page at the end of your paper. Um, and then footnotes, as I mentioned before. And your style also provides information about how your paper should be structured. So um, what information is gonna be included in your introductory paragraph? paragraph? Uh, what information is gonna need to be included in your conclusion? Should you include an abstract? Your writing style is going to inform all of that information. All right. Any questions before we move on? All 
All right, so MLA, APA, and Chicago all publish style guides that you can purchase at bookstores or on Amazon. But generally speaking, there isn't much of a need to actually purchase a style guide. Um, they're updated very frequently. Um, so you end up purchasing that guide every couple of years. So what I do um, with my own research is I use Purdue OWL, uh, this website, it's free. Um, and it's, as I mentioned before, it's Purdue University's writing lab. So they have an online writing lab that they've put together and it's excellent. Um, they keep it updated. Um, so you don't have to wait for the next style to come out. <laughs> you can just look at Purdue out, uh, the next style guide to come out. You can just look at Purdue Owl. So you know that you're always using all the up-to-date writing rules. And it's free. So that, that part is super awesome. And we're gonna, we're actually gonna look at a sample paper. All right, so this is Purdue Owl. Um, and this is an MLA sample paper, since I think that's probably the source that, or the writing style that you all are gonna be using the most frequently. Um, so you can see here on the side that it's, it gives you a ton of information about MLA. Um, I don't I don't know about you guys, but I need examples. That is how I learn. Uh, examples are really helpful to me. So, you know, I can read um, your footer needs to have your last name and page number in the upper right hand corner. But when I go to look at the paper and I see an example of, you know, here is where I need to put that information, it's cemented in my head a little bit more. Um, so, and they'll have an example paper for MLA, APA, and Chicago. They touch on all the main styles. Um, but here we have uh, tips on how to write your introductory paragraph. And then going through a little bit, we can see, I'm looking for an in-text citation. We have a quoted work. We have some quotations here. And here's our in-text citation for MLA. So it'll look different. If you're writing in APA or Chicago, it's gonna look different. Um, and see here we they're including their page numbers. And then let's just scroll down to our works cited page. Okay, and here's a, looks like a quotation. Oh no, seven objectives, okay. Okay, and here we have our conclusion. They've included some notes in this paper. You won't always include notes necessarily, but they did. Okay, and then here's our works cited page. So we have all of our citations listed here. Um, looks like they are in alphabetical order. They have an indent. Um, so no spaces, but it doesn't look like they're double spaced between citations. And these are all things that you wanna note when you're putting together a research paper because it's, it's pretty complicated. I and mean, this is probably one of the more complicated parts of writing a research paper is citing everything properly and putting together your work cited page. Okay, any questions about that? All right, I'm going to go back to my, okay. All right, so let's look at the uh, anatomy of a citation. So like I said, citations can be challenging to get right because there are so many rules to correctly citing your source. Um, and I am, I am gonna show you a little bit of a shortcut here in a minute to uh, putting together your bibliography and putting together citations. 
Um, but don't be discouraged about citations. You can always find examples to follow on the Purdue OWL website. Uh, they will have um, examples of any citation you can possibly come across. Even like if you want to cite a video in your paper, um, you know, a documentary, they'll have a way for you to cite that. They'll show you the, the correct format. And when in doubt, ask a librarian. Um, you can always email me. I have adults who contact me and ask me how to cite a source, so I'm always happy to help you all out. Um, so this is an MLA citation that we have here. And I chose MLA because, like I said, I think most of you will be citing an MLA in the future. But every piece of this citation is supposed to be formatted in a certain way, and it requires that you include specific information. So for instance, we see that the author's last name is first. So it's last name, comma, uh, first name, and then the period um, is essential. <laughs> um, and for instance, if, if, if this were an APA, this would be his last name and then just his first initial period. So um, each style has a different way they want you to format this. Um, so this is the title of the article here. Um, note that every word is capitalized, um, except for articles. Um, in APA, you only capitalize the first letter of the title, and then if there is um, a subtitle, you capitalize the first letter of the subtitle. So, um, but for MLA, you want to capitalize everything. Um, and then for, this is the journal title. So in MLA, again, you're capitalizing every word, um, except for the, you know, the non-essential connecting words. Um, and it is going to be in italics. The journal title must be italicized. Uh, then you are going to include the volume number. So it's VOL period, and then comma, NO periods, so that's the issue number, comma. Um, and then let me just try and get this over. Maybe not. Okay. Um, you have your spring 2010. You're not always going to have, not every source is going to have that information. Um, but if it does have that information, you need to include it. Um, your page range. So you have to put PP period. If it's multiple pages, you put PP period. If it's just one page, it's P period. Um, and then you have to put the page range there and then a period. And then you have to include the database where you found the article. And this is, you use the, the link to find the article or the DOI number. And I'm gonna talk about the DOI number here in a minute, a little bit more. Um, but you can see that there's a lot that goes into a citation and uh, it definitely takes um, a little bit of work to get everything right. So, but don't get discouraged. Like I said, I'm gonna give you a, a hint here in a second. <laughs> okay, so we're gonna talk about keeping up with your sources. Uh, when I was in middle school and high school and beginning to write my very first research papers, we had to use note cards for each of our sources. Um, so we would begin a set of note cards and we'd put our citation at the top and then we would take notes on the cards and that's how we kept up with everything. Um, when I was in graduate school, I actually, I used Zotero, which is a free, um, it's an online uh, tool for tracking your sources and I'm going to show you guys that here um, in just a second. There is also like a more low tech way to do that. Uh, you can just have a Word document that you keep up with everything in. Um, so, and it'll be similar to how I did it in middle school and high school. You just, you cite your source and any links at the top, and then you can just take notes under that. Uh, but Zotero is great. So let's go to Zotero really quickly. All right, so I'm gonna log in. Um, so you will have to sign up for an account, but again, it is free. Okay. 
Okay. Let me show you my profile. Uh oh. I think I might have a problem here. Okay, can I go to my account? Oh no, I'm sorry guys. I think I might be, um, I have to install a, I have to download it, which I have it downloaded on the computer that I normally work from and I don't have it downloaded here. I'm sorry, I should have, um, I should have troubleshooted that beforehand, but, um, but there is an example here that we can use um so what you do is uh, you start a folder for each one of your topics and so mine for instance one of the topics that i've been working on recently is the suffrage movement so i have a folder for suffrage and all of my resources that i want i just i plug into i plug into um my under my folder so you just hit the little add button and then it pops up this little screen here and you put all of your information in so the the item type that might be a book that might be a journal article it might be a newspaper it might be a photograph um, and then you can put the title of your work in and then any authors i usually do include a little abstract just so i remember what the work was about what what it was you know what was important about it to me in my research. Uh, you wanna put the name of the publication, again, our volume and issue numbers, um, our page range. The date that you accessed it is important because some citations will, will require an access date. So that's how you can keep up with that. And the reason that they would require an access date is just to make sure that you access the source recently. Um, if you publish a paper in 2020, and then 10 years later, um, somebody's looking at that paper and they look at the access date and they're like, oh, th well, they accessed it 10 years ago. That source may not be available from there anymore. Um, so it gives them a little bit, it gives a researcher a little bit more information about your source. Um, the DOI number, which a DOI is, um, it stands for Digital Object Identifier Number. And if you find a source in a database or online, and it is a scholarly source, it will have one of these numbers assigned to it. Um, so it is a unique number. Uh, books have a unique number as well, a, a unique identifier number. It's called the ISBN number. Um, and you can actually track down a source by going to doi.org and putting in a doi number and it'll pull up a, a citation for your source so that's what that is uh, and not everything is going to necessarily have a doi number but if it does you want to plug it in there because you will need it for your citation uh, a url so if you found it online you can find it again um, and then you can also put in notes. So it, it has a little function here where you can put in notes, you can put in your page numbers and any quotations that you might like to use. Um, so I really recommend that as a source. I'm sorry, I couldn't show you. So I put it, I created an example for you guys. So <laughs> sorry about that. Um, but I highly recommend Zotero, but if you wanna keep it low key, then definitely you can just kind of put all your information in a Word document. Just remember to keep up with all of the little um, details that you're gonna need for your citations. Uh, and that is pretty much it for class today. Do you all have any questions before we um, end class? Not that I know of, okay, well, Thank you so much for attending. I hope that um, 
the the ins and outs of plagiarism is a little clearer now and you feel ready to hopefully ready to take on citations it's a complicated topic um but i definitely uh, you can do it and purdue owl is going to be a really helpful resource to help you and all as i said please do not hesitate to email me um and ask questions because i am definitely here as a resource for you all and thank you so much for coming to class today.